This scene looks like a response to a terrorist strike. I got the rear. Unfolding on the streets of Los Angeles. But you are watching a simulation of how law enforcement would react if there was a real attack on American soil. Cops on the front lines, the first defence against a strike, foreign or homegrown, on a never-ending training mission for an assault that could happen at any moment. And on this night, Crime Watch Daily cameras are invited to follow an elite counter-terrorism unit during their high-level training for such an event. A simulated military exercise that most people would never see unfolding underground in Los Angeles. Police have just been told that a group of terrorists have just launched a series of coordinated attacks targeting LA's subway system. We know that there are hostages, there are reports of injuries, but most alarmingly, they have detected the presence of a device which looks to have dispersed some sort of a chemical agent. When carrying out a mission, every second counts. First, the unit is briefed on the threat they are about to face. There's a couple of uh, possible suspects acting suspiciously in those stations, trying door handles, trying to get in through uh, staff access only areas. After getting suited up in state-of-the-art tactical gear, the team enters the subway. When you talk about the device, what, what's the device that, uh, that, that you're responding to? It's, it's something that you've encountered in the past? Tonight's device is a, a device that uh, has been seen as a, an Al-Qaeda or an ISIS type device that they've worked on in the past. And uh, without getting into the specifics of it, that's what we're going to uh, you know, simulate tonight. I got the rear. The team stalks the subway looking for a suspect or a device that could disperse a potentially deadly chemical. This unit's mission is very similar to the operation used to counteract the Tokyo sarin attack of 1995, when deadly nerve gas spewed from wrapped packages planted throughout the Japanese subway lines, leaving more than 5,000 injured and killing 13. Uh, let's get somebody to check this trash can here. Uh -huh. Once on the subway car, their suspect is identified and the unit closes in. As all of this is unfolding, Sergeant, this is when you would ordinarily bring in the SWAT team. Now that we've identified this, you know, it's, it's going to be a much larger scale uh, exercise than we had originally anticipated. They're giving him commands, he's not complying. We're going to hold this indefinitely okay. until, you know, until we can get people here to negotiate. While the gunman is holding his hostage at gunpoint, the worst case scenario erupts. Our suspect has set off the, the cyanide device. You can see the, the gas moving across the floor here at this time. Victims uh, choking. Suspects down now, they're going to try to effect an immediate rescue to get our victim out to uh, emergency decon. After getting their hands on the suspect and freeing the hostage, officers drag the two men out onto the platform. The danger of a chemical agent like this is, of course, quite obvious, but can you talk me through, I mean, the risks of setting something like this off in such a confined space like a subway system? With tonight's scenario, this is going to simulate a release of a cyanide gas. Being a blood agent, it would affect one's ability to breathe in it. Cyanide could be a long, painful death, if you will, protracted over several hours, you know, but it, it's a matter of getting in there quickly and affecting rescues. After the threat is contained, the unit heads up to street level for decontamination. So we're going to use a decon solution when they first come up. That's where they're spraying on them. It's going to uh, neutralize any agent that they were exposed to. They'll get, a, they'll get brushed off, so any gross contamination particles, that'll be uh, scrubbed off them as well. Containing a chemical threat just scratches the surface of what this unit can do. These guys trained for years preparing for other kinds of terrorist attacks from radiological and nuclear to explosive and biological threats. What tonight's drill has really hammered home is that terrorism isn't just somebody else's problem, it's knocking at our door. And while these deputies firmly believe that it is a matter of when and not if, there is at least some small comfort in knowing that when it comes to the LA County Sheriff's Department, there are few better agencies anywhere in the world.